In this video, we are going to have a look at the new Sepal Micro 2 Plus slider and also the motorized version as well. We are also going to see what are the differences between this new version and the original Sepal Micro 2 slider. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. A couple of weeks ago when I was talking to the guys from Sepon and I asked them if they have any updates about the pen head for their sliders, they told me the pen head is coming pretty soon. But before that, they have another new product, which is the Sepon Micro 2 Plus slider. So this is a update version of the original Micro 2 slider. But while it looks very similar to the original version, there are actually many differences and improvement that they have done after listening to the feedback from their users. Sepon Micro 2 Plus is a very compact slider, just like the original Micro 2. There are two different versions. There's a menu version, which is the one that I'm holding right now. And there's also a motorized version, which I will also talk about a little bit later on in this review. So it is a very, very compact slider. It's something that you can easily fit inside your camera bag or most kind of backpacks. Put the Micro 2 Plus side by side with the original version. They look very similar, but once you look a little bit closer, then you notice there are actually lots of differences. For example, the metal on the original Micro 2 has a shiny, glossy type of finish, while the new one has a polished metal finish. And if you look at the center bit here, the new version, it is quite a bit um, low profile compared to the original one because the original one, it does extrude quite a bit at the top and the bottom here. There are also many other changes that you really have to look quite a bit closer before you see it. For example, on the side here, with the original Micro 2, there's a piece of white fabric at the side of the track here. This is to prevent dust and dirt from getting inside the slider when you are using the slider. With the new version, that white fabric is still there, but they also put an extra black piece of plastic cover on top of it. But the most obvious difference between the Micro 2 Plus slider and the original version is that now the low profile mount is integrated to the slider. While with the original Micro 2, you have to buy it separately. So they have the accessory called Easy Lock 2, which you have to buy separately and then you can attach or detach from the slider as you wish. With the integrated low profile mount, it means now you can use this slider on the tripod if you want using the tripod mount here but you can also just extend the legs on the low profile mount and then you can just use this slider by putting it on the desk or you can put it on the ground for some really low angle shot the low profile mount on the Micro 2 Plus is a completely new design. It's not just taking the original Easy Lock 2 and then weld it onto the slider. So um, if you look at them side by side, the most noticeable difference is the new version is quite a bit wider. If you have watched my original Micro 2 slider review, you may remember I said I wish the Easy Lock 2 is a little bit wider because with the original Easy Lock 2, sometimes when I put a heavy camera on top of the slider and then push the slider to one side, sometimes it could tip over. So with the new version, the length of the new low profile mount still doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the slider, but compared to the original version, it is quite a bit wider. So when I put a heavier camera on top of it and slide the slider all the way to the edge, it is a lot more stable compared to the original version. There are definitely some pros and cons with this integrated design. I think the biggest advantage is now because it's integrated, so you always have this low profile mount with you. So for example, you're out there shooting and you suddenly say, I want to put it on a very low angle. You can always do that easily without the problem that, oh, I forgot to bring it with me. And also because of the new design and especially the center piece is quite a bit low profile. So the overall size is quite a bit smaller compared to the original version if you have the easy lock attached to it. 
But for people who don't really need the low profile mount, you don't have the option to remove it anymore. That means the slider is a little bit bigger than it could be. And also you have to pay for it when you buy this new Micro 2 Plus. As I have just mentioned, this low profile mount is a completely brand new design. So there are a couple of changes. For example, there's now a hard stop when you try to fully extend the leg. The end bit here is also a bit different to the original one. With the original version, you can remove this end bits here and then you can attach the different accessories like the suction cup and the dolly wheel onto this screw here. With this new version, this can no longer be removed easily and that means you cannot attach a suction cup onto the end here. At least I haven't figured out how to do that. You can still attach the dolly wheel because there's a hole here for you to attach the dolly wheel accessory here so that you can use the slider like a dolly. But uh, I noticed there's no screw for you to mount the dolly wheel directly on here. That means if you have to do that, I think you have to somehow find the correct mounting screw here and also something for you to lock the wheel onto it. But overall, I think I like the new low profile mount more than the original one, partially because it is now a bit wider. And also I think they have simplified the design, which works better in my opinion. For example, if you want to attach the tripod, you don't have to use the quick release plate anymore. You can just directly attach to the base here. And there are also extra mounting holes here for you to secure your tripod. Okay, now let's talk about the slider itself. Just like the original Micro 2, it also uses the double slide design, which has two main advantages. The first one is the slider itself is only 35 centimeter long, so it's not a very big slider, but the total travel is 56 centimeter long, which is really quite long for such a compact slider. And this travel distance is the same, doesn't matter you put it on a tripod or you put it on a desktop like this. So that is definitely very impressive. And the second advantage is if you put the slider like this way and you mount the camera so that the camera is pointing towards the track, with a normal slider, one problem when you pull the camera back is the track may now be visible inside the frame. But with this double slide design, because the track itself would also move back as you pull the camera back. So the chance of the track that is visible inside the frame is much lower. And the slider itself is also very smooth. The motion is dampened very nicely. So look at some of this footage that I shot with this slider. It's very hard to tell this is actually using a manual slider. You may have thought that it is using a motorized slider. With the original Micro 2 slider, once you finish shooting, you can lock the slider by pushing the piece back to the center and then press the two buttons here. So when you do that, you do have to make sure it is right at the center, otherwise you couldn't lock it. And that's the only position that you can lock the slider. So Sepom, they have received feedback from the user and tell them they want to be able to lock it a lot easier. So they have made the changes. Now with the Micro 2 Plus, you can now lock it a lot easier. You can lock it pretty much any position you want by just pressing this button at the edge here. And then to unlock it, you just need to press this button. So you can have the slider in any position, you can still lock it. And that is just a lot easier compared to the original Micro 2. Sepon has also put a silicon pad around this area. This is to minimize the chance that you scratch this centerpiece when you mount the tripod head onto the slider. If you look at my original Micro 2, you see there already some scratch mark here, there, and also around here when I put the tripod head onto the slider. But one thing I do notice when I'm looking at it side by side is this tripod mounting screw here on the new version is quite a bit shorter than the original version. So I'm a little bit worried whether it is like tall enough or deep enough especially when you want to mount some heavy camera gear on it because 
the slider should be able to carry very heavy camera gear, no problem. So I have feedback this to Zappo and tell them, hey, it looks like this is quite a bit shorter compared to the original version. Whether this is a problem or not, they told me they will look into that a little bit more. Okay, now let's talk about the motorized version of this Micro 2 Plus slider. The motorized version is basically the menu Micro 2 Plus plus the motorized module. The module is pretty much the same as the motorized module for the original Micro 2, but it's not exactly the same because there are a few minor differences, which means unfortunately, if you have the motor for the original Micro 2, you could not just use it on the new Micro 2 Plus. If you want the motorized version, you could buy the motorized version of the Micro 2 Plus, or you can just buy the manual version of the Micro 2 Plus first, and then later on, you can upgrade to the motorized version by buying the motorized module separately. One thing you have to watch out is, if you buy the motorized version slider, and later on, if you want to convert it back to a menu slider for whatever reason, you can do that, but you have to buy the menu belt separately, which is around $10. If you buy the menu slider and then buy the motorized module, separately like that, then you have all the accessories to go between menu and motorized version. So I really wish Zepo would have included that menu belt on their motorized version so people can easily switch between the two. And talk about easily switch between the two version. This is something that you can do with the original Micro 2 slider, but it was not really easy. As I mentioned in my original Micro 2 motorized slider review, it would take quite a few minutes the first time you try to do that. And even if you practice it a few more times, it will still take you a minute or two for you to switch between the manual version and the motor version, and you will need some tools to do that. With this new version, it is a lot easier. Let me do a quick demo to show you how do you convert it from a manual slider to the motorized slider. So first thing, turn it around and you unscrew this bit here. Now you can detach it like this. And there's a magnetic mount, which is a new design at the bottom here. So you just need to pull it out. And now you have already removed the manual belt. So you don't need any tools at all. And then the next thing is just put the motor onto the slider. So slide it in and then it comes with the two locking screw here. So you put them on both sides, which is very easy. You don't need any two once again. And once you lock both sides, you are almost already done. And now you just need to put the belt, snap it back on the magnetic mount at the top of the slider, which is now at the bottom because I turned it around. And then the next thing is push it forward and put it here and just lock it. And that's it. That's all you need to do now your manual slider become the motorized slider. Sepon said it's a 30 second process to convert it between a manual and motorized slider. But I would say if you do a few practice, it will probably only take you 15 to 20 seconds. So while I still wish Sepon could make it so that I don't have to swallow any parts, maybe there's a switch somewhere that I can easily switch between the motorized and non-motorized version, at least this is a huge improvement compared to the original Micro 2. The slider is powered using the Sony MPF style battery, just like the original Micro 2. So um, you just put it here and then you mount it. And one small improvement, but it's a huge thing for me, is that now they have included a lock for the battery. This is one thing that I didn't really notice when I did the original review for the motorized version of Micro 2, but after I finished the review, the more I use it, the more I have problem because the original version, it doesn't have a lock for the battery. So quite often, I would just lightly touch it and then the battery 
will fly off my slider and drop onto the ground. I've even talked to Zepon about that many, many times and tell them, hey, my battery fell off the slider again today. You see, this is what happened. So I'm really glad that they finally put a lock for the battery. It may seem like a very small thing, but it is a huge improvement for people who are using this slider a lot, especially those who have to move this slider around quite a bit. The easy interface of this motorized module is very simple. You have one power button on the side here. You use it to turn it on and you can also change between different motor speed by pressing this button. You can see this one light, two light and three lights turn on, indicate the slow, medium and fast speed. And then at the top, we have the two button to move the slider in different way. The motor itself is pretty quiet, especially at the lowest speed setting. Now it is at the lowest speed. you can barely hear any noise at all. At the higher speed setting, the noise is now a bit more obvious. You can also set the AB pawn on the slider by double pressing the button here. I just set the A pawn and now I can set the B pawn. Since the original motorized module was released, Sepon has then released a few more firmware updates to add some more features now you can control using just the slider. For example, you can turn it into the looping mode by pressing the arrow button and the power button together. Or you can trigger a continuous movement by just double tapping one of the directional arrow button. These new firmware features are also available for the Micro 2 Plus motorized version. And with these new changes, it does make the slider very easy to use no matter what kind of shooting that you want to do. But to be honest, I wish Zepon has done a little bit more because right now with the three buttons, it, it is simple, but I think it may be oversimplified the user interface because compared to some other sliders in the market, which has more buttons or maybe even a screen. With those sliders, it is very clear. If you want to do some certain things, like for example, trigger the looping or set the A pawn, B pawn, it is very obvious how you do that without having to look at the menu. With this one, you have to remember some button combinations, which is not too hard, but it would take you a little bit of time to memorize it. Once you memorize it, then it is easy, but I do really wish there are maybe one or two more buttons or maybe even a little screen on the slider, which I think could improve the user interface dramatically. However, on the other side, because it doesn't have any display screen on the slider, a good advantage is the battery life is very good. This is quite a big battery, so it could literally power the slider forever. And even if I forgot to switch off the slider, the slider would automatically turn into a standby mode. And even the next day or a few days later, when I come back to the slider, I can still continue to use the slider. And if I put a smaller battery on it, it can still power the slider for a very reasonable amount of time. So this is one good advantage for a slider that doesn't have any screen on it. Another big advantage of this Zepon slider compared to some other similar size slider in the market is its maximum payload. The slider can carry 4.5 kilogram maximum and is in all directions. So it doesn't matter you have it on horizontally, 45 degree or vertically, you can still put a 4.5 kilogram camera on the slider and it can still do it no problem. This is a lot better than most of its competitors as most of them only has a maximum payload of around two kilogram or so if you use it vertically. The motorized module also has Bluetooth built-in so that you can use it to connect to your smartphone. There is a separate lab 
app z e p o n told me they have a completely new version that they are just releasing. Unfortunately, when I'm working on this review, the new version is still not available. Uh, but I look at some of the screenshot that they sent me. It looks like completely different, and there are many features that is available, including setting the A pawn, B pawn, the different speed, and you can also set up the slider to do time lapse photography as well. Over the last two or three years, I have used and also reviewed quite a few different camera sliders in the market, including the original z e p o n Micro 2, the bigger E800 series slider, and also quite a few other competitors from other brands as well. But I found myself in the end just go back to use the Micro 2 slider as my daily slider, and the reason is not that it has the most amount of features, and as I complained, the user interface. I think it should have a few more buttons. So some other sliders has a lot more features. But what I like about the Micro 2 is its simplicity. It is a very simple slider, and it's also very quick to set up. And the user interface, yes, it does take a bit of time for you to learn and memorize the button combination for some certain feature that you want to trigger. But after spending maybe half a day or a day or so using the slider, you probably would have memorized all the different button combination, and then using it is pretty easy and pretty quick. So that's why I still come back to use the Micro 2, especially sometimes when I want to shoot like in the vertical position, and this is something that the Micro 2 just does a lot better compared to the other compact sliders in the market. And this is exactly the same for the Micro 2 Plus because, in a lot of way, it is pretty much the same slider as the original Micro 2. And I don't mean it in a bad way, saying it is exactly the same slider because the original Micro 2 is a very good slider. So z e p o n has made a few very useful improvement compared to the original version. I guess the most controversial one would be the integrated low-profile mount, which I think some people would love and some people probably wouldn't like it. Maybe drop a comment below. Let me know whether you like the idea. Now they integrate the low-profile mount to the slider, so that we can know whether most people like it or not, and probably good for z e p o n to know about whether this is a thing that most of their user want or not. But most other changes, even though. They may not look like big changes, but they are definitely beneficial for users, especially those who use it a lot. For example, the new lock design, the new button here. For people using the manual version, I think that would be a big improvement compared to the old lock mechanism on the original Micro 2. The battery lock, yeah, it may look like a small thing, but after you drop your battery over 100 times, this is definitely a life-saving feature. If you already have the original Micro 2 slider, I would say it's probably not worth upgrading to this Micro 2 Plus because while the new feature and changes are nice, fundamentally it is still the same slider, and it costs quite a bit of money if you want to upgrade to the new version. But on the other hand, if you are looking at buying a compact slider, no matter a mini one or a motorized one, I would definitely recommend this new Micro 2 Plus slider from z e p o n more than the original Micro 2, and it probably is my favorite compact slider in the market right now.